Welcome to Pediatric Podcast for PedsCases.com. Hi, my name is Dr. Kai Homer, and I'm a resident in radiology at the University of Alberta. This video is the first in a series discussing musculoskeletal radiology in children. We're going to focus on musculoskeletal injuries and go through some cases to help you understand how radiology fits into the whole clinical picture. This first video will discuss terminology used to describe fractures in radiology, focusing on some concepts that are specific to pediatrics. This module was reviewed by Dr. Adrienne Thompson, a pediatric radiologist at the University of Alberta. I'd like to thank the University of Alberta Department of Radiology for allowing access to images from real cases. All images have been de-identified and are used here for educational purposes only. These slides are available at www.pedscases.com. After watching this video, the learner should be able to number one, classify pediatric fractures as incomplete and complete. Number two, subclassify pediatric fractures as transverse, spiral, and other terms. Number three, describe the radiographic appearance of a pediatric fracture to a consultant using appropriate terminology. So we'll start off with how to describe fractures on x-rays. And the first question we're going to answer is what type of fracture are we dealing with? So imagine that this rectangle here represents the humerus. Now something has happened to the humerus that causes a fracture. In this case, this has caused a complete fracture all the way through the humerus. And if you imagine that the top of the slide is the shoulder joint and the bottom of the slide is the elbow joint, this would be a transverse fracture, which just means a fracture that goes across in the horizontal plane. The key here is that it's considered a complete fracture because the fracture line goes all the way across the bone. So now we're going to talk about a new type of fracture. Pretend this is the humerus. Some kind of accident happens, it causes a fracture. But this looks a little different, and that's because this is still a complete fracture through the humerus, but it's called an oblique fracture because it goes across the bone at an angle. So this scenario is a little bit different. Still pretend that this is the humerus, but now imagine that there's torsion being applied on the bone. At the shoulder end, it's being applied one way, at the elbow end it's being applied the other way. So this causes a fracture line, but instead of it being a nice clean straight line, the fracture line has a spiral shape to it. So the bone fragments in a spiral fracture end up having spiral shaped edges looking something like this. So we're going to talk about a new type of fracture. Pretend this is the humerus. Imagine that there's a fracture. Now, what's different about this one? It looks a little bit different. It's still a complete fracture through the pretend humerus, but it hasn't broken the bone completely into two. It's broken it into a couple of pieces. This is called comminuted. Comminuted is just a fancy word to mean a fracture that has more than two parts to them. So you can see here, there's three small little chunks in the middle, and that makes this a comminuted fracture. So again, this is our pretend humerus. But here, you'll notice that there actually isn't a fracture line. It just looks bent. So now we're talking about incomplete fractures. Some fractures in pediatrics are called incomplete because they don't have a distinct fracture line that goes all the way through the bone. Because kids' bones are softer, they can bend rather than break under the force of an impact. When the bone just bends rather than completely snapping in two, the term bowing fracture is used. So now pretend maybe that this is the radius. There's some kind of accident and there's an impact to the radius on one side. And now look at the illustration, what has happened? There's a small little bulge outwards of the cortex. Note that that's on the side of the impact. This is another type of incomplete fracture. It's called a buccal fracture. So we've talked about bowing fractures and buccal fractures. 
We're now going to talk about a third type of incomplete fracture. In this scenario, imagine that there's two forces pulling on both ends of a long bone, kind of as if you were snapping a twig in two. This leads to a fracture line on the tension side, the side getting pulled apart, but the fracture line does not go all the way through the bone. This type of incomplete fracture would be called a green stick fracture. So to recap, there's both complete and incomplete fractures. Some examples of complete fractures are transverse fractures, oblique fractures, spiral fractures, commutative fractures, and some examples of incomplete fractures, which are unique to pediatrics, are bowing fractures, buckle fractures, and green stick fractures. You'll notice at the bottom of the slide, it refers to Salter-Harris fractures. We're going to discuss those in a subsequent video, so stay tuned. So once you've figured out what type of fracture you're dealing with, pretend you're on the phone with a consultant, you want to be able to describe the location of the pieces because that affects the management. So pretend this is the humerus again. As you know, the two pieces of a bone in a fracture aren't always perfectly lined up with each other. Fractures can have varying degrees of what's called displacement. So displacement is the term to describe fractures being offset from one another. Here, this would be considered 25% displaced, 50% displaced here, and 100% displaced. So imagine that this is a broken humerus and there's 100% sideways displacement. This leaves the fracture fragment to move up and down. That process is called shortening. It can also be called foreshortening or overriding. Shortening occurs when the total length of the two fracture fragments doesn't add up to the original length of the bone before the fracture happened because the broken pieces overlap a little bit. So here, imagine that the fracture fragments are being compressed into one another. When the bone is compressed, such as in a crush injury, and the fracture fragments are rammed into each other, the proper term to describe the length difference is impaction. So here, imagine that the fragments are moving away from each other. Distraction is the opposite of impaction. And distraction is when there's a fracture, but the pieces go farther away from each other. So this is our trusty fractured humerus. Angulation is the term used to describe when the fragments sit at an angle to each other, as shown in the illustration. So this is the same diagram of a fractured humerus, but this time I want you to imagine it in 3D. And pay attention to the illustration as I advance the slides. Rotation is when the fracture fragments twist from their original axis. This concludes part one of this video. In the next video in this series, we're going to discuss fractures involving the growth plate using the Salter-Harris classification system. Before we leave, we wanted to leave you with a few key take-home points. Number one, fractures can be classified as either complete or incomplete. Number two, incomplete fractures include bowing, buckle, and green stick fractures and are unique to pediatrics. Number three, the location of fracture fragments can be described by the terms displacement, shortening, impaction, distraction, angulation, and rotation. Thanks for watching part one of the pediatric MSK radiograph series on PEDS cases, and please stay tuned for the rest of this series. Check out www.pedscases.com for more great podcasts, videos, interactive cases, questions, and more. Press subscribe on iTunes to get access to all of our podcasts. If you like what we do, please leave a review on the iTunes store. Share with your friends and colleagues, or think about getting involved.